I like that sort of Atari style architecture of the bridge overpass. It'll be like living in a machine. I mean, that's one vision of it. Is that sustainable? I don't know. But I tell you, if this is the future, I'm getting stock in Chinese lanterns. <laughs> <laughs> We keep running all the lights. Oh, Chinatown. Interesting. One doesn't typically find a Chinatown built along a freeway. It's all become Chinatown. You know, my studio's in Chinatown in L.A. The L.A. Chinatown today is sort of, you know, it's all designed as a stage set, right? Like, or is it designed as a by set designers to kind of be Chinese-esque? It wasn't actually built yeah. by genuine Chinese. Well, it was built by the Chinese community completely, but they consulted set designers for it. In fact, it was old Chinatown is where Union Station is now. The city actually c condemned that location and the racial covenants still existed. So it took quite some time for the community to be approved to move into what used to be Little Italy in the French Quarter. Right. I thought the city condemned it because they thought it was a den of inequity. It was, but they also wanted to put Union Station there and also Chinese weren't allowed to own any property. So the fact that it was a little bit derelict, it's because, you know, there, there was also no ownership to allow. I, I like the building on the left. You see the, that sort of modern style in South America. I don't know. Well, I mean, I think the city's going to no. just become more and more dense. We're going to get more and more packed in close to infrastructure they're gonna the old sort of zoning rules won't apply because we'll have so many people and we'll have to build higher we'll have to build closer to freeways people will have less personal space it's going to be more and more runaway capitalism that's kind of what i see in this so yeah maybe this is a good take on what 2077 would look like 27 years after they the natural gas is banned in california what do you mean by that we're banning it in 2050 i'd like to see them get off of the bike and get and enter some of these buildings or climb around on some of them i like that sort of atari style architecture of the bridge overpass hyper dense and they're very vertical places there's a lot of um signage takes over the entire facades of buildings and car and the pedestrian are like packed on top of one another you know Mm -hmm. Maybe that is what where we're headed. But I tell you, if this is the future, I'm getting stock in Chinese lanterns. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't look sustainable at all. There was like wall mounted exterior air conditioner units. It's hard to say. I mean, cities, our entire environment will be synthetic, will be manufactured, running on electricity, environmental control systems, the, the air conditioning and the heating. I think will be ubiquitous because the planet will have warmed, climate will have changed. There'll be more, probably more more air pollution. It'll be like living in a machine. I mean, that's one vision of it. Is that sustainable? I don't know. I mean, still going to be mining every corner of the earth to collect minerals and iron ore to make steel and other materials. Maybe they'll do solar energy. So there'll be a lot more solar, there might be a lot more nuclear and a lot more hydrogen uh, powered systems. Who knows? Well, there's going to be more green. I mean, all the things that we think of as green today will be commonplace. A lot of things we haven't seen, particularly hydrogen. It could be that fossil fuels are, problem, are a, a thing of the past by then. Is that more sustainable? No, it'll create its own host of problems as well. Um, there's a hydrogen station just down the street from me, actually. Obviously, everything Ben's saying about alternative energies uh, you know, is accurate, but this particular cyberpunk version. I mean, I think that's kind of the steampunk value of it, of the cyberpunk is that there's anachronism. So it's got that Blade Runner, you know, neon versus my version of the future, the lighting is generated by algae. Yeah, a lot of those things won't exist because neon is the is the type of light that they know how to use. It, they'll, it'll exist because it's got historical meaning. And I think the stylization of the interiors is very traditional sci-fi. Oh, that's cool. Hologram. At the last burn, they had uh, the drone installation. Maybe like 3,000 drones go up. They formed into different things, but at one point they formed into this massive face, like a mask. 
that was hovering over all of Burning Man and looking down on it. And the scale was tremendous. And I was like, it's so cool to see that technology because, you know, cut to however many years, it's going to be like the downtown 4th of July celebration is going to have a major drone show like that, you know? So we're seeing like one of the first instances. It's pretty cool. I mean, it's always interesting to explore anything, right? I like seeing the articulation, the way that they're thinking about the world, not only architecturally, but politically, sonically, in every single way, in fashion. And what I found frightening was that it, it feels like a trap. Like it feels like a world in which there's, there's no relief. It's like an endless habit trail, a maze almost, that you can't escape the city. Is that what you're thinking? Yeah, it's a maze of sex shops and electric lights and sort of arcade architecture and noir experience. There's no like ray of light coming in with peace and contentment. There's no break from the, the commercialism of it. There's nothing that stands out as, as sacred in that world. There's, there's no, at least I haven't seen it in it. And there's no nature, there's no places that are made to nourish the spirit. There, it's all about consumption and desire and it's relentless and maybe I, that is where we're headed i agree with you and interesting you the point about there being no sacred because even when you get to the mausoleum it's set up as a very uniform and non-personal gridded space with a digital readout like it actually the one of the spaces that could be sacred was specifically designed not to be the only space where i saw a moment of the sacred would be those two pinkish lavender trees, the projection trees. Yeah, maybe it's in there. I'd have to explore that world a little bit more. Overall, it has this oppressive maze-like, no kind of relief and uh, respite to something that addresses people's kind of spiritual or sacred sentiments. Yeah, well, but at the same time, being kind of bumping and kind of fun and a little bit scary and exciting that way. It's like going out all night in downtown LA underground. <laughs> right. No, yeah, I'm not knocking it. Like, it sounds, sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> I don't know if I could live in it every day, but I probably yeah. have to because there'd be no other choice because, you know, by that time they'll have um, paved over Angeles Crest National Forest and Sequoia or something. At least that's what it feels like. <laughs> Cyberpunk style has come to mean this intense signage overlaid over multiple generations of buildings in this dystopian city. You could design that kind of a world by just taking the existing city of Los Angeles and maybe layering on a hundred years of projected history on top of it and also sort of starting to imagine the the way that circulation, the streets and the and pedestrian ways might weave through that. I mean I think it's about you know, building on what's already there and turning it into this kind of hyper-capitalist uh, world. It's slightly dangerous and also feels a little film noir. So I don't know if there's like a style. I mean, all of those ingredients for me spell cyberpunk. What do you think, Alexis? Well, no, I think the whole point is cyberpunk is cyborg, right? It's all about addendum and incision and these sort of tech add-ons. So definitely that would just happen as a pastiche and layering. Uh, but I do think that in the actual game was interesting because there was a sort of massive block brutalist kind of architecture that would then sort of bridge overhead that we actually don't really do. Um, so there was a little bit, you know, we're always limited by physics or by where our technology is. For more Experts React, Check out Gameology's Facebook and YouTube pages. And for more of me, head to Preen Inc. on Instagram. For more of me, head to Ball Noguez Studio on Instagram. See you next time, guys.